Okay. My presentation is Pediatric Brain Tumors by Shirley Trench. That's me. Introduction to pediatric brain tumors. So uh, tumors are an abnormal cell growth in the brain or central nervous system of children. Brain tumors are the most common solid tumors in children, making about 20% of childhood cancers. Some common types are medulloblastoma, hyalocytic astrocytoma, ependymoma, and craniopharyngioma. General symptoms of pediatric brain tumors, headaches, often worse in the morning, nausea and vomiting, seizures, vision changes, blurred or double vision, and changes in behavior or personality. So the first uh, tumor type is medulloblastoma. And in histology, you'll see small round blue cells. They're highly cellular with neuroectodermal origin, and they're often located in the cerebellum, and they can affect balance and coordination. Then we have hyalocytic astrocytoma, and they are star-shaped glial cells. They have Rosenthal fibers and eosinophilic granular bodies, and they can be found throughout the brain, including the cerebellum, cerebral hemispheres, and optic pathway. We have ependymoma, and these cells resemble the ependymal lining of the ventricles. And in key features, they have perivascular pseudorosettes right here on the right, and they're primarily uh, located near the fourth ventricle in the cerebellum and brainstem area. Then there's craniopharyngioma, and in histology, it's wet keratin, and it's a remnant of the Rathke's pouch, and they're located in the supercellar region right here. Diagnosis of pediatric brain tumors. So there's imaging. They can use MRI, which is the primary imaging technique, and it provides detailed images of the brain and spinal cord. CT scans, useful for emergency situations and bone structure evaluation. There's also biopsy, tissue sample analysis to confirm tumor type and grade. Molecular testing, which identifies specific mutations and helps guide targeted therapies. Lumbar puncture for tumors that may spread to the cerebrospinal fluid, such as medulloblastoma. And treatment approaches. So surgery is often the first line of treatment to remove as much of the tumor as possible. There's radiation therapy, which uh, used post therapy or when tumors are inoperable, intensity modulated and proton therapy may reduce side effects. Chemotherapy, common in younger children, especially with high grade tumors like medulloblastomas targeted therapy, uh, emerging treatments that focus on specific genetic mutations within the tumor, and clinical trials. Participation in trials provides access to cutting edge treatments, particularly for high risk or recurrent cases. Prognosis and outcomes. Prognostic factors depends on tumor type, location, grade, and the extent of the resection. Survival rates vary but medulloblastoma has a relatively high survival rate, around 70 to 80% when treated aggressively, while other cancers might have a poor prognosis. And the quality of life treatment side effects can include cognitive, motor, and endocrine issues. Supportive care and rehabilitation are essential. So some issues can arise like uh, infertility. So that's a, a big thing with these treatments. Advances in pediatric brain tumor treatment. So there's genomic profiling, which allows for personalized treatment based on the tumor's molecular profile. Immunotherapy, emergent research into how the body's immune system can target cancer cells in the brain. Proton therapy offers precision targeting, reducing damage to surrounding healthy tissue and minimizing side effects. Stem cell transplants used in conjunction with high-dose chemotherapy for aggressive tumors. There was also another one, but it wasn't based on pediatric brain tumors. It was more for adult tumors like glioblastoma. And it was like a magnet that you'd put in the brain and it would, with its magnetic field, interrupt 
uh, metaphase in cells. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So it's nice that things are um, definitely improving in terms of research for brain cancer in general. And then conclusion, pediatric brain tumors are a complex and diverse group requiring a tailored approach to diagnosis and treatment. Advances in genetics, imaging, and personalized therapies are improving outcomes. Key takeaway, continued research and innovation are essential for improving survival rates and quality of life for pediatric patients with brain tumors. I also have some quick practice questions. Step one question, a 10-year-old child presents with headaches and balance issues. MRI of the brain shows a well-circumcised cystic mass with an enhancing neural nodule in the cerebellum. Histological examination of the mass reveals elongated eosinophilic fibers within astrocytic cells. What histological feature is most characteristic of this tumor? A, Homer Wright rosettes, B, Rosenthal fibers, C, pseudopalisading necrosis, or D, perivascular pseudorosettes? And then you can choose your answer, and I'll tell you the answer later. <laughs> <laughs> There's a step two question. A seven-year-old boy presents with morning headaches, vomiting, and unsteady gait. MRI of the brain reveals a mass in the cerebellar vermis extending into the fourth ventricle. Histopathology confirms the diagnosis of medulloblastoma. Which of the following is the next step uh, or next best step in management? A, observation and follow-up MRI. B, complete surgical resection followed by chemotherapy and craniospinal irradiation. C, high-dose corticosteroids to reduce intracranial pressure. Or D, palliative care. And then step three question. A six-year-old boy presents with headaches, visual disturbances, and growth failure. MRI shows a large supercellar mass with both solid and cystic components, and calcifications are noted. After surgical resection, the child continues to experience polyuria and polydipsia, and lab results show hypernatremia. Which of the following is the most appropriate next step in management? A, initiate des desmopressin therapy for diabetes insipidus. B, repeat MRI to assess for tumor reoccurrence, initiate growth hormone replacement therapy, or observation with fluid management. And then the answers were B, B, and A. So we could go back. The first one was Rosenthal fibers because it's pilocytic astrocytoma. Uh, the second one is also B. So I always try to do surgical resection first, followed by chemotherapy. And three is initiate desmopressin therapy for diabetes insipidus. Um, and that's all. Thank you for listening. Any questions? Oh. Let me stop recording. Hang on. Um, where are we? Uh, stop.